so in the previous lesson, we looked at pipes and a very nice example on how to use pipes. Uh, but one thing was clear, uh, that pipes could only be used by uh, processes that are in the same hierarchy, right? Because well, here, if I try to create a simple pipe, so I go, okay, int file descriptors of two, and then just, let's say pipe, of fd equals negative one, then return one if that's the case. Um, well, you see here, I'm gonna have fds, meaning file descriptors. And these file descriptors are very special in the sense that if you do fork the process, they are going to be uh, inside the system, the operating system itself, they are going to be copied over from this process to the child process, right? So they can be used in that process and closed uh, on their on their own and whatnot. Okay, so these are sort of special uh, entities. Now, you can't really have a a pipe between two processes that aren't on the same hierarchy, can you? Now there is another feature similar to pipes inside Unix systems. That feature is called FIFOs. And what FIFOs are, are just basically a file type to which you can read or write from any process that you open. Okay, so they are basically very similar to a file. Here, we can start by creating that FIFO in this uh, C program. So I'm gonna actually remove this pipe and create a FIFO file that is going to be used as a pipe. Really, it's going to be a FIFO is really a named pipe. So you're gonna be you're gonna see this uh, FIFO file uh, referred to as a named pipe in certain situations. So uh, they are the same thing. Don't worry about it. So let's let's start here. First things first. I have to include a few files. I'm gonna have here besides uni std, which is pretty normal to have. Uh, we have here include sys, sys slash, um, I think it was stat.h, and I also want to include sys slash types.h, and one more thing, I have to include rnow.h, which you might remember from other videos. Here what we have to do is first create the FIFO file. So to create this FIFO file, we just have to call in the function mk FIFO from make FIFO. And this guy takes in the path, the path to a to the file that we want to create. So here I'm just gonna create it in the current directory. I'm gonna name it just my FIFO. Let's say one. And the second parameter is the permission bits. And uh, they're basically a way of telling who can access what in a file in a Unix system. Here I'm just gonna say that in uh, I'm gonna pass in the value 777 in octal in base eight basically, and this basically tells uh, the operating system that this file is going to be able to be read from or wrote to by anybody in the system. Okay, so I hope that's fine. Okay, and then a semicolon. So now if I try to run this. And if I go to the explorer of my ID or in your own uh, explorer or in the terminal, anywhere you want, you're gonna notice that we have created a file named my FIFO one inside the current folder that we're working in. Now there's a few more important things we have to do here besides just calling MK FIFO. Um, and the first thing is to check the status code. You know, with most Unix functions, you're gonna actually get a status code return to you and that could be zero, negative one or something meaningful other than those two. In this case, MK fever just returns either zero or negative one. And negative one is if something bad happened and zero if it's fine. So what I'm gonna do here is say if MK fever is negative one, then uh, let's say printf uh, could not create fifo file backslash n and then just return one. And if I run this now, again, you'll notice that actually I get this error message. Could not create FIFO file. That's because uh, the file already exists. And because it already exists, there's nothing else to be done. But since 
we after the code here is executed we actually just expect the file to exist we don't care if we created it in this instance on or in the previous one what we can do is check using this error no whether or not that error is just that it already exists so what we can say is here um, if error no is not e exist so if it's not that that means that something else happened besides actually uh, the file just already existing. So after calling mkfifo erno is e exist, that just means that the the file the fifo already exists, and uh, we don't really need to do anything because we're fine with that. We can continue execution. So if it's not that, what I want is just print out an error and return out of the program. Right? This is a uh, nice way of doing things. Okay, so now from here onwards, we actually have the FIFO file in there, right? We, we can see it here, it's created, it's nice, but what can we do with it? Well, it's like any other file, we can open it, we can write to it, we can read from it. Like we did with pipes, more or less. There's one more step before we actually get to the code that is very similar to what we did with pipes. And it is to open the FIFO file, just creating it is not enough, we have to actually open it. And for it to open, we have to call the open function, which is actually in another header file. And if we add here fcntl.h, we can call open. And this open takes in, again, the file path. So I can just uh, type in here my FIFO1. And then the open flag. So for what purpose do we want to uh, open this file. Well, I want to open it to, let's say, write something into it. So, O underscore WR only, or uppercase. So that would open the uh, FIFA, but this guy actually returns something very, very, very important. And that is the file descriptor. Now this file descriptor, you notice we work with when working with pipes, but in that case, there was no file. You, want, you would just create the pipe and you straight up get the file descriptors. But in this case, we create the file and then we open it and that gets us the file descriptor. So int fd and notice here we only get one because, well, we only opened it for writing. So that's to be expected. Now we can actually use it just as we did with a uh, pipe. So we can say Let's say we want to write to it, so I can just say write. I want to write to fd, and I want to write a value. Let's uh, let's get here a value. Let's say x equals, mm, let's say 97, why not? And I'm gonna actually type in the address of x and size of x, or size of int, whichever you prefer. Okay, and then I'm gonna close this uh, file descriptor so that we don't leave it open once we're done execution. And of course, let's also error check this write code. So I'm gonna say if write is, uh, it returned negative one, then I don't know, something bad happens. So I'm just gonna return here the error code too. But usually we shouldn't get into this if, so that's to be expected. Okay, so now let's try to run this uh, program, right? What we do is, well, create a FIFO file that, well, it's not gonna create on this instance, but just to make sure everything works correctly, I'm just gonna remove it. So I'm just gonna delete it from here and it doesn't exist. It's gonna create it in this instance. We're gonna open it. I'm gonna try to write this 97 to it, like any other file. If I run, if I launch it this, you're gonna notice that the terminal just hangs. It doesn't do anything. It just waits there and nothing's happening. What's, what gives? Well, let's stop the execution first. And we can see inside the File Explorer that the FIFO got created, so that's nice. At the very least, we don't have to worry about that too much. The issue is, why did it hang? Well, to find out, the simplest way to actually find out if something just hangs is to print some messages. So I can say here, let's say uh, printf opening opening FIFA, I'm not gonna type in FIFA every single time, so I'm gonna say opening, then I'm gonna say here opened, opened, and then I'm gonna say here, so after this is here written, 
and then also closed. And I think I forgot the backslash ends, so I'm gonna actually add them one at a time here. Okay, so we should get some messages on the screen. So if I launch this again, okay, so we get the opening message, but that's it. So it just hangs there. What's, what's the issue? If I stop the execution, we can notice that, that means that the program hangs at open, right? So once it hits open, it just pops. Nothing's happening. No error because otherwise the program would actually terminate with some something, right? But uh, it just hangs. Now, the reason behind that is a really special functionality for FIFOs, and that is uh, something that's written in the Linux manual. So if you uh, go ahead and search on the internet for the open manual page, and here we are, here we have the open function and how what it does and you can actually scroll quite a while till you find that information but if we go down uh it's somewhere around here and the first fifos there we go so fifos and i think it's a bit too large let me make it a bit smaller so what does this say uh for fifos it says that opening the read or write end of a fifo blocks until the other end is also opened by another process or thread what does that mean? Well, that means that if you open a FIFA for writing, the open call hangs or blocks, as it says in the docs, until another process comes along and opens the same FIFO for reading. Right? And then when the other process actually opened it for reading, the process that it opened for writing will continue. Is that clear? I can actually uh, show you guys what's up with that. So here what I can do is let's first just remove the FIFA so that we have a uh, clean slate. Doesn't really matter I don't think but uh, just to be safe if I launch this I'm just gonna get a terminal that uh, hangs at opening. Okay so I'm gonna put this on the side and I'm gonna open another terminal. So on the left I have the actual program that we wrote and here on the right I have my own terminal to the folder that we're working with. So here if I say ls we're gonna get the main executable, main.c, my own FIFO file and that's about it. What I can do with this is actually read from this my FIFO. So remember this guy will write a value, a value to, uh, to that FIFO and now it's waiting, it's quite really just waiting for a process to read from that FIFO. And what I can do is just use the the program called cat to just read whatever is in this file. And if I hit enter, notice that this guy has finished its execution. It no longer hanged, it actually continued its execution from that uh, open call. And it opened, it wrote, and it closed. And everything went smoothly from then on. So you see, with FIFOs, you always have to have both ends opened at the same time. That's their special property. Uh, if you don't do that, the, the one, one of the opens is just gonna hang there, okay? Or all the opens, if you have just, if you open uh, the same FIFO multiple times for writing, all of those open calls are gonna hang because there's no process that opened it for reading, okay? So in this case, what happened is we read from this and as you notice I have here a small a and this is not an error or anything like that this is actually the contents of this my fifo <laughs> uh, that's because I played a little trick on you guys and uh, here I said write x right write whatever is on x and that x actually has the value 97 on it and 97 if you take a look at an ascii table is actually the uh, value a. So I can say here instead of a, let's say, I don't know, uppercase z. Or, yeah, you can you can really do whatever you want, but if I do this and launch the program and get a terminal here and again say cat my FIFO 1 and hit enter, you're gonna notice I get an uppercase z here. 
So that is uh, that is why you get a lowercase a. That is why you get an uppercase z in this case. So that is what we actually wrote into that my FIFO file, and we actually read it on that terminal on that process. And only after that process started executing, opened that FIFO for reading. This guy continued its execution. Now you notice here there's no communication really between processes. What we have here is just a simple program, just one program, one process. Everything is just one single line uh, of execution. Um, that's because the other process that was reading wasn't it, it wasn't wrote by us, right? It, it wasn't created by us. It's just a process, a program that already exists. But before actually getting into uh, communication between processes using this FIFO, you see it's going to be very simple. I just wanted to get this out of the way because it is very important to understand from the get go. Otherwise, you could be very confused about why and how certain things are synchronized properly. This special property of FIFOs is one of the main reasons we actually use it for process communication and not just a plain old text file. You might have realized if we actually open the FIFO for reading without having anybody write to, it's also going to hang. So here, if I actually run that cat program on my FIFO without doing anything, you'll notice it just stops. It doesn't do anything. I can type in here stuff, but doesn't do anything unless I just terminate it forcefully. So uh, it also waits for its right end to uh, open it for writing. Do not hear that if you actually change this from just write only to O, oh, I think it's RDWR, that's for both read and write. If you do that, um, actually, if you launch the program, it's going to terminate because you have it open for reading and writing. And well, you wrote to it and you also open it for reading. So it doesn't have to wait for anything to open again because it is already open for reading. So it's going to finish its execution. OK, so then in that case, it's not going to wait. Now, one more remark here is that you don't have to actually call mkfifo from a C file. You can first create the FIFO file yourself using the mkfifo program. So I can see here. So here I have my FIFO one. So I can say mkfifo uh, my FIFO two. Let's say, and if hit enter, uh, you'll notice it created my FIFO two here as well. So in that case, uh, you wouldn't have to actually add this code, but uh, I added it for completion's sake, and it's uh, usually is very nice for the program that is writing to that FIFO to create its own. FIFO and also check if it already exists. If it exists, it shouldn't really need to error out or anything like that. And one more important step uh, before we finish this video is uh, you should actually check what open returns. So if this FD is actually negative one, FD is negative one, then you should actually return an error code. That means that something bad happened and it couldn't open the file, it doesn't exist or something else. Not that it hangs, but because uh, of other issues. Now, that's all there is to this video. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how to communicate between processes using this FIFO concept. And uh, well, I hope you got something out of this video. If you do have any questions, please do leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.